What's an event in history that is so ridiculous it sounds fake? Hannibal saved his army by tying torches to the horns of 5,000 cows and driving them one direction. The Romans thought they were the enemy army and converged on them. While Hannibal quietly snuck his 10,000 man force out of the valley by another route. The Germans and Russians once called a temporary unofficial ceasefire in World War I because of wolves invading the battlefield. They were displaced from their normal hunting grounds and looking for something to eat, which turned out to be local livestock, corpses, children, and unwary or incapacitated soldiers. It got so bad that everyone stopped shooting at each other for a while so they could hunt them down. Proving once more that the threat of being eaten is stronger than any political ideal. The Erfurt Latrine Disaster The Erfurt Latrine Disaster occurred on 26 July 1184, when Henry VI, King of Germany later Holy Roman Emperor, held a Hoftag informal assembly in the Petersburg Citadel in Erfurt. On the morning of 26 July, the combined weight of the assembled nobles caused the wooden second-story floor of the building to collapse and most of them fell through into the latrine cesspit below the ground floor, where about 60 of them drowned in liquid excrement. The guy who founded Scientology once engaged in a multi-day naval battle with a log. He would then go on to commit an act of war against Mexico. The Field of the Cloth of Gold, where an English king and a French one tried to outbling each other. The fact that two monkeys covered in gold leaf were far from the most ostentatious display is a good indication of how tasteful it was. When two perfectly working pistols failed to fire on U.S. President Andrew Jackson who then beat his would be assassined so badly that the presidential security detail had to pull him off to save the man's life. The Great Wyndham Frog War. In 1754 Wyndham, Connecticut was still a frontier settlement. One hot night the residents awoke to gruesome sounds that convinced them that the local Indians were attacking. Throughout the night they strove to drive off the attackers with steady gunfire. In the morning they crept out to find thousands of dead frogs who had spent the night competing for the dwindling water. Rather than being ashamed, this has become a central part of the town's character. The town's symbol is a frog and the bridge is decorated with large frogs at each corner. Operation Mincemeat Basically, the British dressed a random dead guy in a military uniform put fake invasion plans in his pocket, and dropped him on the shore of Spain. The Spanish found the body and invasion plans and informed Germany. Germany, believing the invasion plans were real, sent an army to Greece which is exactly what the Brits wanted. Because they were actually going to invade Sicily. That time Denmark and Canada I think had a war over an island. Every time a navy vessel drove by they picked up the flag of the over nation. Planted their own and left a bottle of alcohol. I heard it stop not that long ago. Russia sending their Baltic fleet to fight the Japanese navy. Yes. The Baltic is on the other side of the planet. No. The Baltic sailors had never seen ocean. Or naval war. Ever. Yes. It was a shit show. It lasted for months. They attacked everything from Danish fishing vessels to each other. Again and again. Thinking the ship next to them was a Japanese torpedo boat. Outside of F Nigeria. It wasn't. It was also Russian. Luckily they were so inept that 99 of all shots fired went into the ocean. The Four Seasons Total Landscaping Press Conference. It would have been rejected for an episode of Veep because it was so ridiculous. When America went to war with Spain, the Spanish forgot to tell their territory. Guam. The U.S. sent a single warship to the island where they took 13 shots at the fort. The leaders on the island rode out to apologize they couldn't return their salute. They had no gunpowder. 
That is why Guam is a U.S. territory. Wilmer McLean's house was involved in both the first last battles of the U.S. Civil War. First Battle of Bull Run took place at his home in Manassas, VA so he moved his family to Appomattox, VA thinking they would be safe but crazily Robert E. Lee ended up surrendering to Grant in the McLean's new home. Wilmer McLean was quoted as saying the war began in my front yard and ended in my front parlor. Edit quote is apparently not legit person shrugging. The Great Canadian Maple Syrup Heist. The largest dollar value. Inflation adjusted heist in Canadian history. Cadaver Synod. New Pope digs up the old Pope. Puts him on trial. Finds him guilty. And punished the corpse. For whatever reason they don't teach you about that in Catholic school. Battle of Castle Itter. Nazis and American Allied troops going to a castle rescuing some people there. Stanislav Petrov literally saved the world from nuclear destruction by not calling in a missile launch when he was in command. He figured it must be a malfunction even though all his computers told him it was not. It was a malfunction. Had he called it in, there would have been several billion dead. That U.S. Air Force tried to develop a bio-weapon that makes people homosexual. A literal gay bomb. A heartwarming one the Christmas truce in 1914. The whole premise sounds like a sappy Hallmark Christmas film but I'm so happy that it's actually real. Ancient Egyptians went on strike building a royal necropolis in the year 1152 BC and were the first to ever strike. And in a pleasant turn of events, the workers received higher wages and returned to the project. To be clear, they were not slaves or anything, just the craftsmen of their time. But I still found it odd that even thousands of years ago there is documented evidence of striking being successful rather than companies attempting to squash down modern strikes. That thing at Kitty Hawk where two guys in a bike shop cobbled together a glider and attached an internal combustion engine and started flying? The Boston Molasses Disaster Colonel Sanders' entire life. Look it up on Wikipedia it's utterly ridiculous. Stephen King was so obsessed with the song Mambo No. 5 that his wife threatened to divorce him. In the 1600s, Japanese samurai fought with Mexican soldiers in Acapulco. We know this because it was recorded by the grandson of an Aztec king. In 1982, Larry Walters strapped a bunch of weather balloons to a lawn chair and flew 16,000 feet in the air. Over L.A. That's about half the height of commercial airline cruising altitude. Just a guy up there in a lawn chair taking in the sights. And he landed safely. When the first cars ever came out the state of Ohio had two of them. Those two only existing cars somehow managed to crash into each other. Marvin Hemeyer and the Killdozer. It sounds like something straight out of a movie. The time the British Empire and the USA nearly had a war over a pig. The British Empire and Spain once had a war over an ear. The Dutch once sailed up the Medway and gave the Royal Navy a bloody nose in its own royal dockyard. At Chatham. When they blowed up that whale and it just made things worse. Santa Claus attended the first Council of Nicaea and socked someone in the face. Santa Claus. A.K.A. Saint Nicholas is based on a real person who was the Bishop of Myra. In modern Turkey, he attended the First Council of Nicaea. Legend has it that he assaulted a follower of the Arian heresy. People dancing to death in medieval France. Pepsi becoming a world superpower has to be up there right? Edit I want to add John McAfee's life as well.